Hi, physiology students, and welcome to lab nine. Um, this will be about specific blood tests. And I know we've been over blood already, so we'll review a little bit about blood, and then we'll look at the lab manual for the different tests um, that you will have been had talked about if we were in person. Um, so blood is the only fluid tissue in the body. If you remember, um, the matrix is non-living fluid called plasma, and cells are the living blood cells called the formed elements and the cells will be suspended in the plasma. So the formed elements in your blood are your erythrocytes, your red blood cells. The leukocytes are the white blood cells associated with the immune response. We just talked about that in chapter 15. And then all of the platelets, which are um, responsible for clotting of the blood. So if we um, would take a spun down tube of a blood sample, it would give us three layers. The erythrocytes would go to the bottom that makes up about 45% of your whole blood. The hematocrit is a blood test that gives us the percent of blood volume that is red blood cells. So the normal values in males is, is about 47% plus or minus five, and females is a little less, about 42%. So again, the hematocrit is the percent of blood volume that is red blood cells. So it's a percentage. Uh, white blood cells and the platelets are in the buffy coat, which make up less than 1% of a blood sample. Um, and the plasma will always be on the top of a blood sample. So this is taking um, the, a blood sample from a patient, spinning it down in the centrifuge, and then we get these layers separated out. The plasma goes to the top. Uh, the buffy coat is this thin part here, less than 1%. That includes your leukocytes and your platelets. And then the erythrocytes um, take up about 45% of the whole blood and they will sink to the bottom. Um, so your average adult volume contains about five liters of blood. We have arterial blood and venous blood. And again, it's made up of 45% formed elements and 55% plasma by volume. Again, this is just another look um, the platelets and white blood cells are found in that buffy coat. Here are the five different types of white blood cells. The platelets are responsible for clotting. And then the red blood cells um, are the erythrocytes, which carry oxygen in hemoglobin. Uh, plasma is the fluid part of blood. It includes water, dissolved solutes. Uh, this is a look at um, represent representative normal blood values. And I'm gonna focus here down on the hematocrit and hemoglobin and red blood cell count and white blood cell count because this is what your lab will go over in terms of these are the normal values. Again, the hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells. So the hematocrit is always the percentage. The hemoglobin uh, would be measured in grams per milliliter. So the amount of hemoglobin in the blood. And again, these are normal values and your lab will ask you and we'll have several patients that are in the abnormal range and you'll have to determine uh, what's wrong with each patient. Here's the normal red blood cell count as, normal, as well as the normal white blood cell count. So these are um, representative normal plasma levels of those. And you'll wanna focus on this area of that chart uh, for the lab. Uh, levels of hormones, ions, and other organic molecules there. So your erythrocytes are, again, your flattened biconcave red blood cell discs. They carry oxygen in the hemoglobin molecule. So each uh, red blood cell contains about 280 million hemoglobin molecules. Um, and I'll show you, there's your red blood cells. And the hemoglobin will just um, carry the oxygen. And that's why your hemoglobin numbers are important. It's important to know if your hemoglobin numbers are in a certain range because that will determine if you have the oxygen capacity and the oxygen carrying ability in your red blood cells. Uh, anemia is an abnormally low hemoglobin or red blood cell count. And anemia is um, unfortunately bad because it means your red blood cells are not carrying enough oxygen. You can have iron deficiency anemia, pernicious anemia is an immune disorder, or aplastic anemia. So anemia is any sort of abnormally low hemoglobin or red blood cell count. Um, iron is associated with this um, because iron is involved in the molecular structure of the hemoglobin molecule. So that's why if you hear people who are anemic, they may have low iron levels uh, because iron is needed um, in the hemoglobin protein structure. Uh, leukocytes are your white blood cell. Uh, their count is approximately 5,000 to 9,000 per um, milliliter of blood. 
There's different types of leukocytes. You have the granular leukocytes and the agranular leukocytes. And these are the five different types of leukocytes seen here, um, as well as kind of the size comparison with the erythrocytes and the platelets. Uh, the platelets are also called thrombocytes. They will clot blood with several other chemicals and fibrinogen. They'll release serotonin that stimulates vasoconstriction, which will also help in blood clotting. And their count is about 130,000 to 400,000 per cubic meter of blood. So this takes you through the components of the formed elements, the description, and the number present, and then their function in the formed elements of blood. Then we talk about blood, um, blood type and blood type. So we all have a type of blood and it's um, our type of blood is named for the antigen that's found on the surface of our red blood cells. Um, our plasma has antibodies, which will respond to foreign cells of different or non-self antigens. And the ABO system breaks it down, um, just describing antigens on erythrocyte cell surfaces. So type A blood has the A antigen, type B blood has the B antigen, type AB blood has both A and B antigens, and type O blood has neither A nor B antigen. So here's the antigen on the red blood cell. This would be type A blood, B blood, O blood, and AB blood. Um, the antibody in the plasma, so if you're type A, you'll have antibodies against the B antigen. If you're type B blood, you'll have antibodies against A. If you're type O blood, you'll have both types of antibodies. And if you're type AB blood, you'll have neither antibodies because you'll have both antigens on your red blood cell surface. So you're not going to create antibodies um, that will attack um, your own self. Uh, the plasma will contain these antibodies against the antigens not present. So again, type A and B will have opposite antibodies and that's a misprint there. This will be anti-A antibodies. Uh, type AB blood has no antibodies, so we call it the universal recipient. And type O blood has both types of antibodies, and we call that the universal donor. Uh, a transfusion reaction, if a person receives the wrong blood type, antibodies will bind to erythrocytes and cause agglutination. And that occurs here. So here's type A blood with the um, antibodies against the type B antigen. And if we have these antibodies binding up with type B blood, they will clump up and grab hold of the type B blood and cause a clumping or agglutination. Um, so that would be representative of a bad blood transfusion. Uh, agglutination can be really important with blood typing and I have an exercise that you'll have to go through to determine blood typing. Um, if, it, if there's no type of agglutination or no clumping, it just means that that antigen was not present. So we added um, an anti-B antibody in this type A blood um, and it wasn't able to find the B antigen. So there was no clumping or no agglutination. But here we added the anti-A antibody and it was able to find that A antigen because this is type A blood. So that anti-A antibody clumped up with the A blood and caused agglutination. So if you see agglutination, that means that this person is positive for that antigen. So this is a type A person. The RH factor is just the word for another antigen that could be present or absent on the surface of the red blood cells. So this is the antigen D or RH factor. So if you're positive, you have the antigen D. And if you're negative, you do not have the antigen. So I'm A positive. So I have uh, antigen A and this antigen D. If you're A negative, you just have antigen A. Um, Rh negative does not have the antigen and it will not have any antibodies against it unless it's exposed to that positive antigen either through a blood transfusion or pregnancy. And this can cause an issue in pregnancy as in we talked before, um, an Rh negative mother who could be exposed to Rh positive fetal blood will produce antibodies against that fetus blood it wouldn't cause any issues in the first pregnancy, but in subsequent pregnancies, now this RH negative mother has antibodies um, to that RH factor, and it could cause erythroblastosis fatalis. So it could cause death in the fetus by breaking apart its red blood cells when the antibodies cross the placenta and attack. So the RH negative mother will be treated with Rogam, which will just inactivate those antigens. 
So the instructions for the lab report, and I'm gonna go through that right now, you have to match up the patient with their blood test result. This is the end of the lab in the lab manual of blood tests. And then you should complete the virtual blood typing lab um, following um, this link. And I'll put this link in Canvas as well. Um, and you need to tell me the blood type of those five patients. Uh, this is a virtual link um, from another college that I'm teaching at and I will show you um, that right now. It's a great example. So let's take a look at the, um, so here's the blood tests in your lab manual. So what I want you to, you'll, have, you'll wanna read through this because you're kind of reiterates what I talked about and gives you some good information of how to answer kind of the final questions at the end, leukocytosis, leukopenia, um, platelets. So at the end here, you need to go through, these are results of blood tests from several patients, four patients. And there's some abnormality with each patient and you have to match it up with the abnormality here. The person that has these results, whether uh, they could have a fever, sore throat, dieting, complaining of fatigue and looking pale. So you'll need to go through and match up the patient number um, here and also provide an explanation. So that will be the first part of the uh, lab report that I'll need to see. And the second part, again, will be this activity, the virtual lab. So here's the link for that. And um, you'll need to go through and perform this blood typing. And to do that, um, what you'll do is you'll click on the lid of each patient blood sample. So when you click on the lid, it puts a drop of that patient's blood into the test tray. And then you'll add antibodies against that antigen that's labeled in the test tray. So if we add anti-A antibodies, we're testing to see if the A antigen is present. If it is present, it'll cause agglutination because these anti-A antibodies will bind up with the A antigen and it'll cause clumping. So if we get agglutination, that means that antigen is present and that will tell you the blood type. So agglutination means this antigen is present. So this would be a type A person or a type B if there's agglutination. The RH, if there's agglutination there, that just means it's positive for the RH factor. And if there's no agglutination, it's negative. So you need to add antibodies to each of the wells in the test tray. And then don't forget to mix. And after you mix, when the, where there is agglutination, that means that that antigen was present because the antibody was able to clump up, grab hold of it and cause agglutination. So I will tell you the first one. So this patient number one is B positive because there's agglutination in the B tray and the RH tray. So also as a part of your lab report, just list these five patient blood samples and then give me um, their blood type. And that'll be it for this lab. Uh, thanks for listening guys. Again, post a question or a comment in the lab discussion that I'll set up for this too.